But I got to that point and I thought, how do you do it? How, how are you able to write that? How are you able to read it? And I can hear the emotion in your voice mm -hmm. when you're telling the story. How are you able to sing that song on stage? I, I just, I can't, e that can't be easy. It's not. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, and even in writing it, so I gotta be honest, I didn't want to write it. It was the weirdest thing ever. You know, as a writer, I have a little tablet by my bed and I used to, you know, wake up and go, wake up with an idea and write it down. And, and that morning I woke up with that, course kind of going through my head and I thought and I was crying you know uh it was really frustrating uh and and I, for whatever reason instead of just writing it down like I normally would I set up and it, like like this force beyond me I got up I went downstairs to my little area and I got my guitar and I just started playing I started writing and I literally wrote that entire song wow uh, I cried the whole time, like ugly weeping, you know, and trying to sing <laughs> while I was doing all this. It was horrible and it was dumb. And, I'm, and the whole time I'm doing it going, you know, what the hell is wrong with you? Why are you doing that? And I cannot to this day. I mean, I have an explanation. I, I say it was God. And here's how I'm able to do that song. And I'm not always. There's plenty of nights that I'll, I'll tell the boys. The, it, it, even, and I, sometimes the environment makes it a little easier for me not to do it. You know, when you're on stage in front of 30,000 drunk people, it's easy to not do that song. <laughs> <laughs> Makes but sense. When, you're, when you're in a theater mm -hmm. and and it's quiet and everybody's just wanting to hear every lyric, you know, you feel like you need to. But there have been times where I said, I just can't do it tonight. I don't have the energy. Because when I do that song, it takes every, there have been moments on stage where I almost fall down. Literally. It's just that tough. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but I do that song because I do believe, I, I swear to you, if I, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. Uh, I believe, I, I said this earlier, we all suffer pain. And I believe that sometimes we have to suffer pain for others. And so I believe <clears throat> that God expects me to do that song some nights. Not for me, not to make me feel better, but for someone else who needed to hear it. And so I do it. Yeah. But again, not always. <laughs> Sometimes I can't do it. Yeah. So, um, Well, that's very human of you. And I think that that's, that song, this book, all of it is so, like, you really just put yourself out there. And, um, and it's admirable that you're able to be so vulner vulnerable in such a, on such a public forum. Um, because, but it's, I think it's because you get it. It's just what you're saying. It's what I've heard you say in the book and it's what you said here that this is you're doing this for a reason this isn't just you someone's working through you this is this is happening because you are able to make people feel better by living through your experiences uh, honestly too i just don't know any other way mm. um, yeah. um so just one more quest or discussion on that you mentioned briefly in the book um at the funeral that there were some country artists oh, yeah. who came and i i also heard you once talk tell a story about blake and and the people that you saw there um at your son jerry's funeral can you not that we want to we we all wanted to be there with you like Tell us what that was like when you when you look up. I mean, I remember, and and you know, I'm sure people you've had people in your family die or whatever, and you're standing there at the receiving line, and you look up and you're so surprised at some of the faces. But I can't even imagine what that would have been like for you. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't remember a whole lot. It was just so overwhelming, yeah. and there were so many people. Uh, and what was funny, I mean, there were a lot of my friends came. And, and I found this fascinating. Guys like Trey Sackins, John Conley, uh, Jim Ed Brown. Uh, I, I'm talking about, you know, industry leaders. Sure. Uh, Colin Reed, the CEO of, of, uh, of Gaylord, who owns the Ryman and the Opry and uh, Opryland Hotel, all this stuff. Anyway, all of these people who at any point in their life can snap their fingers and be at the front of a line. They can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not one of them did that. Trey Sacken stood in, in a line of, uh, I'm not kidding you, I think it was about a mile long. And Trace was out there in line and my brother comes up to me, or Jerry, my tour manager, says, 
hey, bro, Trace is out there. I said, go get him. Bring him in. He don't need to stand out there. And I wasn't saying that he was better than anybody else. But, you know, at that moment, the last thing Trace needed was to stand in a funeral line and people come up going, can I get a picture with you? Sure. You know, and I didn't want that to happen to my friends. And so we did. We brought him in. And I was just fascinated that they, they were there, one. And two, they didn't want to bother me with anything. They just wanted to show support. When Blake came in, Blake flew in for that funeral, him and Gwen. Uh, for the actual funeral. And uh, they were sitting up in the top of the church, you know. They didn't, uh, I didn't even know he was there. Someone come and told me, I think, I'm pretty sure I seen Blake and Gwen. I said, well, go get him. I think it might be Jerry again, Jerry looking after me. Uh, and Blake came in and Gwen stayed out in, out in the open area. She wouldn't come into the room with us until Blake had let us know that she was there and we said it was okay for her to come. I just, I mean, and as soon as that happened, my wife was like, she wins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, Blake, are out, and she is in. <laughs> uh, and she no offense, Blake. <laughs> yeah, she immediately went, immediately went straight to my wife and prayed with my wife. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was just, it, they were, they're beautiful. And it was, uh, it was very heartwarming to know that, you know, I mean, that's, that's a hard thing. Yeah. yeah. And what it does, too, and I recognize this. Every time they're in that situation, like for me now, every time I meet someone who tells me they've lost a child, it just reignites all that for me. Well, that was doing that for all those people. That funeral was doing that for everyone there. Blake lost a brother. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it, it put him back into that emotional state. He had to go through experiencing that heartache again. So I, I was just so grateful. I don't remember a lot. I do remember C.C. Wines when she was singing. I was sitting in the front and just... Just absolutely lost my mind. Uh, but the, the one thing I remember more than any is my wife's speech and her strength. Wow. I mean, she was just an absolute, uh, it was unbelievable. It was, it was very, very godly. Yeah. Let's play a song. <laughs> well, this one's going, this, we're going to get a, take a different route here. Okay. Let me just say this before we get into the song, though, is that the, the reason that I asked is because country music is such a personal yes. format. Um, and when I heard that all those people showed up for you, I thought it's, it's true. Like, I know it's true because we talk to you guys and, and we know that you're, that you really are friends with Blake, that you, like, that you really all do know each other and you hang out and when you can and that sort of thing it, it's like a family yeah but it then really but is. then for them to show up like yeah. when you really need it's, it's not just for show it is real yeah. and i i just can't get that message out enough like i i love that about what we do yeah it is like it's like a family yeah. and that's i think that's why our music is the best country music that is